Pastor Francis, open us in a word of prayer, please. You may be seated as I call Pastor Hernandez for welcoming remarks. Well, thank you for that uh, wonderful singing. And uh, again, welcome to our evening uh, services, evening worship. I just want you to, uh, to pray for uh, what we have discussed this morning regarding our building program. I'm excited about the building program. Are you? Amen. Amen. Let's be excited about that, okay? And uh, uh, we hope to get a permit. Uh, that we will not have any problem in getting in, in getting the permit in, this, in the county of Alameda, and to pray, of course, is going to be uh, Brother Preacher Jim's responsibility to to start uh, doing that. And we have decided to uh, go to the Plan B, right? Uh, again, to find out whether we are, we can be allowed to build, you know, with with in in the in the in the plan that that we are going to. Uh, provide to them. But we are on the plan B. Okay, let me just uh, repeat again. The plan B, we're not going to make any changes to our existing building. The existing building, this building, and that building will remain. We are not going to be moving any building at all. We'll, it, this will remain. And the building will be built right in front. Okay, it, it, it will be, you know, in front of this building. There. And it can seat around 300 or more people. All right? And in order for us to accommodate uh, more people and parking space, we need, we're going to have to dismantle the, uh, the, the, the parsonage. And it, it will take some time, you know. It's not going to take, it's not, it's not going to be this year or next year. Maybe it will be the last thing that we'll be doing, okay, as soon as the building is done. Uh, because, you know, uh, when, when, you, when you try to get a, permit, a, per, a permission to uh, build a building here in, 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 the, in California, you need to, uh, you need to have a... Uh, uh, a, the correct the correct uh, number of parking space, okay, for the number of attendants you expect, or the number of people you you can accommodate. For example, if uh, if if you have uh, 100 attendants, 100 congregants coming to your church, then you need to have one parking space for every four people. Okay, that means 40 people. You need to have what 10 parking space. 400 people, you need to have 100 parking space. So, you know, so we need to, f to figure out, can we accommodate 100 parking space? If we cannot, they cannot, the, the county cannot give us a permit uh, for uh, to, uh, to having capacity of 400 people. But of course, uh, Filipinos being short and smaller, okay, <laughs> we can make adjustments, okay, you know, for 200, you can probably accommodate for about 400. And so, <laughs> And so, so please pray about that, and uh, let us really work hard, uh, not only by praying about uh, for it, but also uh, uh, sacrificing and giving uh, to uh, to our building project, our building program. We will again promote our first fruit giving. We we'll promote our sacrificial giving, and please pray that uh, we can really get the loan. Another blessing, though, is this. Uh, Dr. Rudy Holland, the one who helped us in purchasing this property many years ago, uh, called me up yesterday and said, Brother Bunty, I'm going to help you also get another bank to give you a loan. So at least we have two or three options to get a loan, not only in the U.S. Bank. Okay, we are going to apply with the U.S. Bank, uh, the bank that handles our mortgage loan, and then he will also try to get another bank, uh, Christian organization, that can also handle a loan. And I have another organization, also a Christian organization, that is helping churches to also get a loan. And so please pray for that. And our, <clears throat> our plan is to, uh, is to have a uh, steel frame uh, property. You probably have noticed uh, the, uh, what do you call this? 
the uh, makeshift buildings you can find, you know, to build auditorium, gymnasiums, warehouses, warehouse buildings, and the, the, the main framework of those buildings are still frameworks, and they're a lot cheaper than regular building. And uh, one estimate that we got uh, from a company that I contacted about uh, three weeks ago uh, is uh, we will be spending only the materials, no labor yet, only the materials, will be spending about $31,000 for the steel building. Now well, that's a good amount of money, okay? And then of course, if you, if you will factor uh, them to uh, complete it and to put up the structure, then it'll be additional. And then what I'm thinking, because we have a lot of men here who are engineers, architects and people who can who know building, then we can, we can just finish it ourselves. So we can really save a lot of money, okay? Uh, but if you're gonna ask me how much money do we intend to borrow to from the bank? You know, I'll probably go, you know, as much as uh, half a million dollars so that we can be able to really do a major renovation of this property. Like if you get that money, we will use the money to have a building, we will renovate this building, we'll renovate our school, we will renovate this facility, so that after it's done, this property will be first class. Okay, I think, I think uh, when we have more space, when we can, when we can with more people, then we can, we, we, can, we, we can see a lot more people coming than to accommodate more, more uh, you know, a ministry into the church, all right? So I want you to pray and be excited about this. Again, if we, if we, if we will trust on our affordability and our ability, we cannot afford it, we cannot do anything. Okay, we're gonna get, be stuck. But we believe in the power of God, we believe in the grace of God, we believe, we believe in the ability of God. And I believe God will provide. You know, just like what happened to the refund coming from the IRS. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting, you know, have you heard, heard, have you heard any, any church getting a refund? I spoke to my friends, my other friends, pastor's friends, you know, I said, have you ever heard of the church getting a refund from the IRS? No. Oh, really? And then I spoke to another. Have you heard uh, any, any churches here in, in America getting a refund from the IRS? No. Why? Well, because we just got the refund of $9,000. And I said, how did, how, did it ha how did that happen? I said, I don't know. Okay, what I know is that uh, they're, they're, they're getting at us with the Evercare Foundation, took out our <laughs> nonprofit organization, and they get, get, got at me, started to audit me, and then they tried to get information about the church. I told them, no, you cannot, you cannot get in our church because we are exempted in filing a tax, a, a tax report. But what I did, I, I showed them our documentation, statement from the IRS, everything else. I gave it to them, and I prayed. So, Lord, please don't allow them to get into our church. You know, actually, they cannot. They cannot force us because of the separation of church and state. Okay? And they had tried that at the, in one church, and the church said no, and they couldn't do anything. They can just scare us. But I was prepared. I was prepared to uh, be bold, to tell them, no, you cannot do that. But I was afraid because they, they started to inquire. You know, after after they know that I'm getting, uh, I'm 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 leaving, in the, uh, I'm leaving here, and also I'm trying, to, uh, I'm getting uh, my my parents from the church, and so when I said, I just prayed, and all of a sudden after three, after uh, less than a month, I received this envelope from the IRS. It's like what I said this morning. It scared me to even open it. It took me a while to even open it because I was so scared. I started praying, Lord, what is this? Okay, well, you know what? If we have any problem, the first one who goes to jail is me. But I'm not scared of that, you know, I'm willing to go to jail for the church. And so uh, I, 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 I kind of cast, I, I kind of carefully opened the envelope. I saw my name, oh my goodness, it's my name, my name again. International Baptist Church, care of Hernan Sabante. And then when I started reading, you know, refund, 8,900 plus dollars to International Bible Baptist Church. So praise God for that. And I said, amen. You know, I was in tears after that. I cried the tears of joy. You know, I said, we need the money so that we can be able to get a tent. We can be able to prepare, you know, for the anniversary. And the Lord is just giving that just on time. Just in time. Amen. Praise God for that. So, so I said, well, 
this is an indication that God will provide. So we ought not to be afraid. We ought not to be scared, you know, of us uh, exploring, getting into a building program because I've waited for this for so long. And I, I prayed. I said, Lord, I'm not going to leave this earth, okay? I'm going to leave until 100 years old until I get this property, okay? You know, I, I want, want to be able to see this property, and then if, if I see the property, then I'm ready to go. <laughs> but of course, I don't want that. But it's my prayer. I remember my father, when he was alive, he was the one who wanted to have a, a building pro program in the Philippines. He wanted, he even designed a, a, a building in the Philippines with a lighthouse. He designed that, and then he died. But before he died, he left a plan to my brother. And the first thing that Ruben did is he, 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 he was bold enough to say, we're going to do this project. Did he lose people because of that? Yes, he did. Many people thought we could, they couldn't do it. You know, I mean, people got mad at him, all right, left the church because they had to totally dismantle the whole building and they had to, uh, uh, to rent a, uh, the whole floor of a building for several months, I believe about six months. You were there, Helen, right? About six months and they're paying more the money and yet look at the Lighthouse Baptist, now, Baptist Church now. It's the same... Uh, what they built in that, uh, in that church is the same, it is same design that my, f my, my father had envisioned before he died. And now the church we left, they all came back. Most of them came back. All right, now it, it can now see, seat about 1,500 people in one sitting. From, from I think 400 seating capacity to 1,500 seating capacity, you know? They couldn't afford it before. But it's just uh, Pastor Ruben and the men of the church and some few men said, we can do it, the Lord can do it. Now they're actually reaping, reaping wonderful harvest because of faith. Faith, okay, faith. And I believe if you do the same thing, put our faith in God and pray to God and, and unite our hearts together and be faithful unto God, God will give us our desire. Okay, so put it, put it in a matter of prayer, okay? And uh, let's just expect good things, expect great things from God. Amen? Okay, let's do that, all right? So uh, I'll be making announcements, and Preacher June is going to make uh, more reports about this, regarding this, okay? And then I will, uh, I will proceed with, with this, uh, this, this, coming, this coming months, these coming weeks. Do you have any questions regarding the building? We have, the, we have your Preacher June who can ask, answer your questions. Have any questions? Any concerns? Any comments? Yes. Yes. Those of you have have fallen in love with a tree. Soon you will have to say you have to you have to bid goodbye to the tree. Huh? Yeah. yeah plant it at your house. That's good. That's what he said. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna cut it. We're going to also take the the house uh, house out. Okay. So that we can be able to have more uh, spaces for the for the parking. Any more questions? Any more comments? Any more? Okay. All right. No more. All right. Okay. Just uh, I, you know, present present this for God in your prayer. Let's all stand, please, and sing our welcome song. We will glorify the. before his throne we will worship him in righteousness we will worship him alone let's not go around and good each one
Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Please be seated. Thank you very much. Please pray. Uh, the rest of our members are still on vacation, traveling, coming back. Okay, so uh, please pray for our protection. Now, now I just want to, uh, now you heard about the canonization of Pope John Paul II. <laughs> and Pope John Paul the XXII. Yeah, they were canonized. When was this, last Friday? So they're now legitimate saints. Yeah, John Paul II and John Paul XXIII. They're now real saints. Well, we're better than them. We don't need to be canonized. We are already saints. <laughs> Amen. Right? Saint Jeremy? <laughs> huh? Saint King James? Yes, amen. Saint Fatima? It does not jive. <laughs> Our Lady of <laughs> I tell you, that's the, uh, that's the biggest news this, 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 uh, this week about the canonization. A lot of Filipinos are excited. I don't know why they're excited. Okay. But you have heard about uh, the, 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 uh, the statue that they erected for him and then it fell and killed the person? In Italy. How many of you heard that? Yeah, they built a statue. All right. A big statue. And then, and then there, there was a guy, I believe, was standing there. And it fell. Killed the person. On the same day of the canonization. All right? Now, uh, so, uh, huh? <laughs> I know. It, it, it is a bad sign. You know, I mean, uh, uh, another thing also, I would like you to, again, continue to pray for Mark Lewis. Again, uh, I don't want to speak more in detail this morning, but, you know, I, 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 want, I want to share this with you. Number one, because we are a good friend to his father, John, John Lewis. And uh, I've been trying to get hold of John Lewis and texting him and left messages. He's uh, not actually replying. You know, I would understand that he probably, he probably just wants to uh, be kept to himself. Although his wife, Vicky, texted my wife because we extended our, our, our uh, a kind of uh, 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 sympathy to them and tell them that we're praying for them and uh, and she said thank you very much you know this is a time that we can really tell who our friends are because uh, in a way she said you know uh, when you go through these things all of a sudden your friends are no longer, no longer your friends they begin judging you they begin condemning you but they appreciate the fact the fact that you have extended yourself to us and communicate with us you know uh, and, and I think they deserve that. They deserve our prayers because they're the ones, that, they, they, they're not the guilty party. Granted that the son did something bad. And I'm sure, I believe I'm sure. In fact, I just got a, a message from Dr. Brad Weniger, you know, and he said, you know, Brother Avante, I don't think he will, he will get, he, he will get a, uh, a, a, a fair trial in, in Vacaville because the news is all over. Okay, I think he needs to go to another place that nobody, where, where nobody knows him. A lot of people are now offended about the church, about what, what is done because of the, uh, of the uh, presentation in 2020. Okay, so the three cases are charged against him. Arson, stalking, domestic violence, and possibly first degree murder against his wife who died in 2011 which at the time was reported as suicide, okay? Uh, another charge that can also be brought against him is, uh, is, is, is actually, uh, you know, being a pedophile because apparently he was uh, uh, going after a 14-year-old member of his church and sent that member uh, a, a nude picture of himself. And so there's another issue there. Sometimes we wonder how can a person who is not only a believer, a pastor of the church, you know, 
who claim to be fundamental, KJV, and all those kind of things, uh, do that. Just like what I said this morning, the devil is all out there to save us. The devil is all out there to trouble us, to defeat us. That's why we need to be careful, extra careful. We need to be strong in our faith. We need to be cautious in our testimony because the devil is going to send people out there uh, to disguise as a friend and yet their intention is just to ruin our lives okay uh, now he's in jail now they have to sell his property in order to put up a bail and he has a bail of one million dollars and now the church unfortunately is now selling a lot of their properties in order to raise the the, the, uh, the fund to pay the bail the Fellowship Baptist Church. I'm thinking of going there and, and, and just visit and maybe extend, you know, because it's not the church's fault. You know, uh, uh, I, I would understand some, some of the members are still defending the pastor, but you know what, my case is, uh, I think the best way to defend the pastor is to be able to encourage him to just tell the truth and to be honest. If he's not guilty of what is, what is being accused of, then at least tell the truth about what he has done wrong, okay? And then confess it for God because only God can actually help him at this point. Right. I don't think anybody can help him. I don't think even the law can help him, okay? Uh, the church can help him, only God can help him. And uh, he can only be helped when he comes humble, humbly before God and seek the will of God. But what I want you, what, what I want you is pray you know, and I spoke to uh, Lance this morning, and also please pray, please pray for Lance. I had a wonderful conversation with Lance. You know, he spoke to me, he told me, Pastor, you know, when you were giving that message, it just reminded me, it reminded me of what I'm going through right now. Pastor, you know, uh, before, before I got saved, before I came to this church, before I got baptized, I knew I was the bad person. I knew I was doing drugs, I was doing marijuana, I was doing everything bad against my family. But after he got saved, the Lord changed my heart. I stopped taking drugs, I stopped taking marijuana, I stopped everything, you know, I, I, I got rid of my bitterness against any against people. I'm happy. But now that I'm happy, my wife is now mad at me. questioning me why I'm going to church. Well, before, you know, he's begging me to stop all this, this. But now, it is his wife now who's actually trying to force him to take marijuana. And he said, I don't understand that, Pastor. I thought she would be happy. Well, I said, you know, when you do things for the Lord, when you obey God, when you take the side of God, people the enemy will go against us. Please pray for him. And, he, and, and so he said, you know, because he's confused. What kind of message am I getting, Pastor? Should I, because my wife does not want me to come to church. She was so upset when I got baptized. Now she's telling me, it's me or the church. And that's, I believe, believe me, that's, uh, that, that's a hard choice. And then after our conversation, I asked, I, I asked him, you know, when there's a conflict between man and God, the Bible says obey God rather than man. It doesn't, you know, I, I'm not saying that you need to get rid of your wife, no. By all means, try to win your wife. Be the best husband as you can be. Be the best father as you can be. But you need to stick on the foundation of the Lord and do the right thing. And God is going to bless, you know, your righteousness. And at the end, he smiled and said, you know, Pastor, I made a decision. I will do the right thing. I will keep on coming to church. Amen. I'm not going to leave my wife, but if she's the one who leaves me, she's the one who leaves me. I just like what the Bible says, I let her go. But I'll, I'll always open my door for her to come back anytime. You know, I, that, that, uh, the, he, he blessed my heart after my conversation with him. I said, this guy is a changed man. He's totally a changed man. 
And so, and so, in a way, I praise God. I praise that message because it really struck him. It made uh, uh, Christian life real. And, and he said, you know, uh, you know, when I heard that message, it just struck me. And oh, I'm going through that. I have lots of questions about these things. And now, Pastor, just, you know, through your message, a lot of questions have been answered to me. Okay? You know, so... Uh, uh, so th th I just want to share that with you to pray for Lance. The last name of the last name of Lance is what? Hayden. Lance Hayden. He has two children, one boy and one 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 girl. Okay, and so uh, uh, and he's concerned about his children. Apparently, it's a prayer. Apparently, his wife. You know, his wife has uh, 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 went to uh, Christian school before. And he got offended, you know. I please pray, please, please pray for her. All right. Okay. Let's uh, let's now proceed. So this goes to our special number for tonight. I call preacher Ben up. like spring you want to sing you want to pass it on I wish for you my friend this happiness that I found Shout it from the mountain top. I want the world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. Amen. Amen. Praise God for the special. As we all rise, as we go, move on to our offertory, as I call up two ushers, please. As I kindly ask preacher Jeremy to please um, pray for the offer.
worship you. Amen. As we remain standing, as we grab our King James Bible, as we move on to our Bible pledge. As we recite this all together, let us begin. This is my Bible. It is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It tells me who I am, what I can become, and where I am going. It renews my mind, changes my heart, and refreshes my soul. It is my daily bread. By faith, I'll believe his promises, obey his commandments, and honor his principles in my life. With the Bible as my guide, I will walk by faith and not by sight. As you remain standing, as I call up Pastor Ernest. Let us go to Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8, let's read from verse 5 to 13. I will continue the message I started this morning on a backslidden life. It says in verse 5, Why then, be sure, why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual, perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit and refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. Yet a stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and a turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do we say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Law certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them. Therefore I will give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For everyone from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine nor fix on the fig tree, and the leaf shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you again, O God, for the word that you have given us tonight. To remind us, O Lord, of the danger of a backslidden life. To prevent us, O God, to uh, succumb, O oh Lord, to the snares of Satan, O oh God, to follow you and to turn our backs, O oh God, away from you. I pray, O oh God, that this message, O oh Lord, will really uh, rest on our hearts and minds, O oh God, to make an impact within us, O oh Lord, that it's never too late, O oh God, to return to you if we are backsliding. There's always forgiveness is always grace that you can pour upon us. I pray, O oh God, that uh, revival will occur, O oh God, in the lives of our, your people, beginning in my life. That revival will also occur, O oh God, in, in this whole church, so that your blessings, O oh God, will be enjoyed by everybody. O oh God, because of your grace, O oh Lord, we still... Uh, Enjoy the many blessings you have given to us. And it's because of your grace, not because of any one of us. But I pray, O oh Lord, that you just speak to our hearts with this message. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Christ's name we ask all these things. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Backsliding is a serious matter. In fact, it is serious enough for God to even pronounce judgment to the backsliders. Now, although we know that God is not going to give eternal judgment 
to the backsliders because we have, yeah, he has given us already eternal hope. Now let me point out first of all that only believers can backslide. Unbelievers cannot backslide because there's nothing in them to slide back. They're already, they are there already. They have not been to the front and then slide back. So I just want that to be very clear, okay? Backsliding is only for the believers. And what I, just like what I said this morning, backsliding is a spiritual illness. A spiritual death is for the unbelievers. But when a person who is in Christ, who is saved, begins to follow the world, that means that person is spiritually ill. And the only resort, the only solution to that spiritual illness, spiritual weakness is to turn to God, is to repent of sins and confess it unto the Lord. Now, just like what this verse says in beginning in verse 5, why then is the people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? Now, although a backslider cannot be able to suffer eternal death, but you know what? The backslider can suffer sin unto death. That's two different things. Eternal death is that death in the lake of fire. But sin unto death is the kind of death, it's the physical death that you suffer because of your sin against God. That's judgment. You know, all the judgment that believers commit in this world will be done on this earth. There's no eternal judgment for any believer except the Bema judgment. That's the judgment for rewards. Okay? Only those, only the unbelievers and those who are, sa that are not saved are the ones who suffer the eternal judgment in hell and also in the lake of fire. But the sin unto death can, occur, can occur in every believer who sin against God. In every believer who live, he live for the world. In every, on, on every believer who turn their back on God. That means God will allow them to suffer the sin unto death so that they will just die because of their sin. The consequence of their sin will be physical death so that they can no longer be an embarrassment to God. They can no longer be, you know, an embarrassment to the believers and they can no longer be, uh, be, be, be uh, a, a, a kind of, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, affect the lives of those who are, uh, who are faithful unto God. And so it is, it, it has been happening since time immemorial in the Old Testament. It is all also happening in the, in, in the New Testament. It is happening until today. Now, so we can find here the end of backsliding or the consequences of backsliding. And I, I believe we, we, we have it in verse, uh, in verse 10. Okay? In verse 10, Therefore will I give their wives unto others. And there are fields to them that shall inherit them. For everyone from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophets even unto the priests, everyone dealeth falsely. Sometimes when we sin against God, when we continue to sin against God and live according to the will of men and, will, and live according to, uh, to against, uh, you know, contrary to the will of God, God cannot bless us. God can never protect us. God cannot pour out in his blessings upon us so that we suffer the consequence of uh, all the wrong things we have done. For they have heard, healed the hurt of the daughter of my people, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Oh, they will pray for peace. They will uh, desire peace, but they will, never, well, they will never experience the peace that passeth all understanding. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. You know, I've seen those kind of, I was like that before. There was a time in my life in which I was so, I was so backslidden that I could really care less. You know, I mean, I, uh, I, w I would stand in the pulpit, uh, appear as though I was right with God, appear as though I was strong in the Lord, but actually deep in my heart, I was totally backslidden. My heart was too far away from God. You know, my, my, my desire is to please myself, is to please the world, not to please God. See, I thought I could hide from God. Oh, yes, I, I, I was able to hide, you know, uh, uh, from men. I was able to hide from my father. I was able to hide, you know, from, from the church. But I, can, I, 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 never, I could never hide from God. 
God knows all the time. That's why it says, it says here, uh, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall, fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. In verse 13, I will surely consume them. You know, we will be consumed upon our lust. See, you know, be sure sin will find you out. Oh, some people say, well, nobody knows what I'm doing. Yes, sin will find us out. And there's something I'm so scared about. I believe that's something all believers must be scared about. Because most of us think that we can just do away with sin. Anyway, my pastor does not know. Anyway, my parents do not know. Anyway, my friends do not know. My church uh, does not know. Nobody knows. So I can just do whatever I want to do in a merry way. <coughs> mocking God. But just like the Bible said, be sure your sin will find you out. See? Nor figs on the tree. God is not going to bless whatever you touch. And the leaves shall fade. And the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Now, what is the difference between a believer who is faithful, believer who is not, who is not backsliding, and yet suffers this kind of of, uh, of, of persecution, this kind of trials. You know, you know the difference? You know, a believer who suffers <coughs> trials and persecutions, they receive eternal rewards in heaven. Faithfulness will always yield eternal rewards in heaven. A backslider who lives contrary to God's will, who lives far away from God, <coughs> who thinks they can get away from God, okay? They do not only suffer the consequence of their sins on this earth, but more so, they will be denied rewards in heaven. There's no reward for them in heaven. See? And so, <coughs> let's be reminded of this. Let's realize the enormity and the seriousness of a life that is far away from God. Of a life that is of the world. And that's why we can find a lot of verses, a lot of, a lot of exhortation in the word of God that we ought to live for God. We ought to be faithful to God. We ought to commit our lives to God. We, should, we ought to love the Lord our God with all their heart, with all their strength, with all our power, with all our soul. Why? Because God wants us to be able to enjoy Him. God wants us to be able to be blessed by Him so that we can be able to enjoy the fullness of the fullness of his grace and the fullness of his bounty because God loves us so much. Okay, is that my water? <coughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes I feel, how come I, I'm getting, I remember when, I, when my mother was getting old, I was always wondering, how come she's always uh, coughing for no reason? Now, I'm experiencing it right now. Okay, I think it comes with age. And Fatima said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, so do, do we, do we real, re realize the seriousness of a life that is far away from God? Somebody said, when you're in the ministry, That is the worst case scenario because in the ministry, it's easy to backslide. Sometimes we think it's easy to backslide when, you are in the, when you're out of the ministry. It's easier to backslide when you're in the ministry. You know why? We can be, because we can be hypocrites. We can be as though we are okay, but not, we actually we're not. We can hide. At least those who are, not in the, who are not in the ministry, it is obvious, you know. It's not as dangerous as anybody who is in the ministry, you know, who appears as though he's okay, faithful, and yet within, within the heart, full of sin, full of hypocrisy, and full of wickedness. Now, that's why I've learned that in a hard way. When I was in the Philippines, 
you know, because I wanted so much to be a performer. You know, I would, I would be in the church leading singing, teaching Sunday school, and preaching. But in the evening, I would actually perform, perform in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in, uh, in a place, okay, worldly songs, take a, a sip of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, I call girly wine, because I don't drink uh, strong wine, okay, until one o'clock in the morning, I would have my uncle pick me up from the church, okay, he's actually my partner in crime, he would pick me up at nine o'clock, and then take me, take me to the hotel, take me to uh, to hotel where there are bar, the bar and nightclubs and perform there until one o'clock in the morning and then bring me home. And my father, I, I, would, I would see that my father would be, would, would, would be asleep so I wouldn't get in trouble. I remember one time my father was, awa was, was awake. I did not want to get inside. But I was so tired, I was so hungry, I had to go inside. I waited and waited so I thought he is asleep. Lo and behold, he was actually behind the door waiting for me. And of course, when I got home that morning, I was in my costume, you know, I call it a costume because I changed clothes. Because when you're in the church, you ought to be in, in your appropriate clothing. But when you go into the performance like that, I put on my, 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 my bell-bottom pants, you know, during that time, it's bell-bottom. Now, how many of you have, now how many of you have seen that bell-bottom pants? Okay, <laughs> you have seen that? How old are you guys? Okay, now that's in the 1970s, okay, bell-bottom pants, and, uh, and, 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 and made of uh, corduroy, okay, and made of uh, knit in different colors, and then I was wearing also uh, 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 a pair of shoes, elevator shoes. Oh, yes. Yeah, elevator shoes, okay, that tall. I mean, you think elevator shoes is just on today? It was on during our time. Not only for the ladies, but also for men. And I was short. I was only 5'4". I wanted to be 5'6". So I would, act, I would actually, I would actually put wear. Yeah. Yeah, Afro. There you go. I was about to go there. Okay, you're early. You're early. And, and, and so the two, two inch elevator shoes and the color of my shoes was actually gold and the color of my pants bellwater pants was green can you imagine they match and then my hair was afro hair i still kept the afro hair when i came to the states by the way all right why because i wanted to be incognito i would actually appear on tv i didn't want my father to recognize me i had my own name you know what my name was Jose Miranda. That's my, that's my uh, name. Nobody noticed me. I was on TV. You know, I would perform in CCP. I would perform in all the piano, playing piano synthesizer, all the singing. I would accompany, you know, I mean, these crazy things. I've done these crazy things without the knowledge of my father. I knew I was living a double life. I was miserable inside me. On the other hand, I was still enjoying the world. Why? Because I wanted fame. I wanted money. I wanted influence. I wanted power. I experienced all those things when I was younger. I ended up having a girlfriend who's a, an actress. That's why my, 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 my brother would always be surprised because he would see pictures of my girlfriends. They're all beautiful. I'm not saying that his is not beautiful. <laughs> you know? But that's my past. And that was not a, not, not a good past. And I've suffered the consequence of those wrong choices. And that's one part of the reason why I came to America. Because I knew if I had, had I stayed in the Philippines, I would be known. I would be discovered. My hypocrisy will be revealed. So I decided I, I'm going to the States because I don't want to be 
I don't want to be a preacher anymore because I knew I was a hypocrite. A backslidden life. I want to assure you, the life of a backslider is not a happy life. It is not a fulfilled life. It's a very, very miserable life. The life of a backslider is a serious life. And I would not want any one of you here to experience that kind of life. I paid a dear price for what I have done. There's a reason why I praise God for His grace. That despite all the things I've done wrong in my past life, the Lord has now blessed me so much. That's why I don't care anymore about sufferings in the ministry. I don't care anymore about difficulties in the ministry. Because I've seen the difference. Now, by the way, you don't need to go through what I've experienced to backslide. You don't need to go down deep into the pit to feel that you're a backslider. Just like what I said. The first three things I shared this morning about the symptoms of backsliding is simply number one. What was number one? Lack of desire of interest in the Word of God. That's the first thing. When you begin to see yourself not interested in the Word of God, to read the Word of God and listen to the Word of God and to even under the Word of God, that means you are backsliding whether you admit it or not. Because that's how I started. I was even justifying myself. I was teaching in Bible college. I was teaching the Sanus class. My, my, my students were actually English-speaking students. The Sunshine class. They're all... Uh, children of missionaries and children of our members who speak English. I was their teacher. But I was living in sin. And I remember I would read the Bible just for the sake of getting ready for my class. I would read the Bible just for the sake of getting ready for, to teach Bible college. I was reading the Bible because I was, uh, I was instructed, I, I was scheduled to preach or to teach. But outside of that, I didn't care about the Word of God. Outside of that, I didn't want to read the Word of God. Now what about you? Do you still love the Word of God? Do you have a longing to come to church and hear the Word of God? Do you have a longing to open your book, your Bible every morning and read the Word of God? Do you have the thirst for God and the thirst for His fellowship? If you do not have the thirst for God and the thirst for His fellowship and, for the, and the hunger for God's Word, then you are backsliding. Search your heart. Second, neglect of Christian responsibility. Nonchalant attitude. Indifferent attitude. I don't care attitude. No care about the ministry. No care about the loss. No care about the church. No care about, does not care about, 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 the, uh, uh, about other people. The maturity of other people. Just not care at all. I don't care. Because a person who loves God, a person who is... You know, who is in the center of God's will cares. A person who is in, with God cares so much for God. And cares so much for who God's love. And what God, what, what, what God loves. And number three, I'm just repeating what I said this morning. When self is more important than others. I mean, the most important individuals in your life is me, myself, and I. The only reason 
The only reason you have is because I don't have these things. It's because I am not happy. It's because I am not fed anymore because nobody loves me. When you find yourself and you hear yourself mentioning all those me, me, I, you are backsliding. I'm not here to judge you, but it's the word of God who judges us. By the way, anybody will say, well, pastor, you're judging me. That's backsliding too. That means in denial. How do I know that? I was like that before. I remember when I was backsliding, I would go to the church, and every time somebody would actually preach against backsliding, I hate, I would hate that person. Look at this person is judging me. Why? Why do you feel that way? Because I was backsliding. I would hate somebody, you know, who would, re who would rebuke me. I would, I would hate a preacher who would go against what I wanted. Instead of yielding to God. And another, another symptoms. When we become more concerned with petty issues or non-important issues. Instead of godly issues. Amen? When before, before you didn't have a problem, you know, with the, when, 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 when there's no comfortable seat. After a while, it becomes a problem. Before, we didn't have, we, you, you, you don't have a problem with the no air conditioner. And now, you complain because there's no air conditioner. Because before, there was the, there, there's no problem with uh, not, not having nursery. Now, you complain of not having nursery and you use it as a, as a condition to be faithful. You know, before you don't have any problem with the music, but now you complain about the music. What has changed? What has changed? What has changed is the attitude. What has changed is their spiritual condition because a person who is uh, in the center of God's will just like what apostle says apostle says in Philippians chapter 4 okay he is satisfied in any situations amen content in every situations but we become more concerned with petty or non-important issues well, when all of a sudden time becomes a problem. Remember before you got, when, when, when you first got saved, you wanted so much to hear. Even to hear um, a message preached even for one hour, right? You know, one hour is not good enough for you. More, 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 more. When you're a backslider, less, 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 less. You look at the clock all the time. You know, pastor is still preaching. It's about 40 minutes now. One hour, 40 minutes now. When all of a sudden distance becomes an issue. When before distance is not an issue, you can travel as far as you could, you know, just in, in order just to worship God. But now all of a sudden, oh, I don't have time. That means you're backsliding. Now, how many of us have experienced all these things? Only me? When there's another thing, when there's a lack of burden for the lost. I even heard one person say, well, in a way, all the, all the people, you know, all the saved people are elected. So they'll be saved anyway, even if they'll go out there and share the gospel. What do you realize? The work evangelism the work of soul winning is also a part of God's sovereign grace and God's sovereign plan another symptoms when the world feels good than the church when the world feels good than being with Christian friends when the world feels good than God So that we can we, we, we take away all the presence of God. Have you seen people like that? Yes. 
when I was backsliding deep into backsliding, I didn't want to touch the Bible. I didn't want, I would only go to church because I had to. But if I could avo avoid it, I would avoid it. Why? Because I'm always guilty. Another thing. When there's no fulfillment and when there's no satisfaction in the victories and blessings that you receive. You don't, have, you, don't, you don't have the ability anymore to recognize blessings and to thank God for blessings. You are a backslider. It happened to me. I remember when I was being successful, I was making a lot of money. I remember my brother Benny would actually be surprised. Where are you getting those money? Of course, he didn't know I was actually working someplace. In fact, he would borrow money from me and he would ask, you have a lot of money, where did you get that? I love the money. I love the fame. And because of that, I thought I didn't need God anymore. I didn't need the church anymore. And because of that, I actually, I, 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 I try to ascribe all my victories to me. It's because of what I've done, because of my ability. It's because of my talents. It's because of me. Without not anymore recognizing the work of the Lord and the blessings of God. Another symptoms of backsliding when we think we are indispensable, when we think that this work cannot go on without me. I've met people like I met people like that. I was like that before. Oh, this church cannot go on without me. You know what? I realize even if, if I'm the pastor of this church, this, this church go on not because of me, because of God. I can be so proud and arrogant and say, you know, this church will collapse if I'm not here anymore. No, it will not. Maybe this church will be more blessed. Another thing, another symptoms of backsliding, when we start to question and doubt the will of God. Question and doubt the will of God. Oh, how many times I've questioned God in my life? How many times I've questioned the will of God? You know, uh, part of what happened to me is this. In my life, I became disillusioned growing up as a preacher's kid. Because it's not easy to be a preacher's kid. I felt disregarded all of us felt disregarded I felt judged by people abandoned there was a point in the ministry of my father in which the very people that he was ministering to were the same people who abandoned him the same people who accused him the same people who attacked him the same people who persec persecuted him. I saw that. I got hurt. I retained bitterness in my heart. I remember at the time I was talking to my brother Benny and both of us, he's not yet I mean, a preacher. And he wanted to join the NPA wanted to go to the mountain. It was not a joke. You know what the NPA is? National People's Army in the Philippines. Hukbalahab, the communist party of the Philippines. Because of the injustice and fairness we have received from the hands of the American missionaries and people that we have loved so much and we cared so much. And because of that, I got the solution. I promised to myself 
that I would not be in the ministry. And of course, I could not blame that. I cannot put the blame on them for that, especially now. But during the time, I didn't know the meaning of Romans 8.28. I was bitter. I was not seeing the circumstances through the spectacle of God. I was seeing the circumstances through my own spectacle, through my own filters, not God's. So I questioned God. I doubted God. I began to control my life. I began to rule my life. Remember I told you I left, this, I left the Philippines without my father knowing it? I never even depended on my father to come to the States. I earned my own money, saved my own fare, you know, got my own contacts here in the, Philippi in the, in the States to get scholarship on my own. I was so proud I could do it on my own. Among us brothers, I was the first one who came to the States. I was the first one who got a scholarship. I was the first one who graduated from college. I was the first one who owned a car. I was the first one who owned a house. I was proud, so proud of that. We came from a very poor family. Very, very poor family. We didn't have anything when we were, when we were growing up. The story I was telling you that there was a time as a, as a preacher's kid, we would actually sit around the table with nothing on the table. And the only food we have is, a, is a rice and salt to taste. I went, I went through that. We didn't have any house. We had to live in a parsonage. And I wanted so much to get away from that kind of living. And I promised myself, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to live a comfortable life. I'm going, to, I'm going to make happiness for myself. I'm going to also uh, 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 save my family from, 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 uh, from uh, being impoverished, from poverty. I even told God, God, you did not actually fulfill anything for us economically. I tried. That's why I came to America, to hide. But praise God, because of his grace, he called me back to himself. When I came to America, guess what? Who, who, who helped me? Church friends. Guess who gave me a job? A church in San Francisco. Guess who gave me a house? The church in San Francisco. Who gave me my first job? The church being a music director. Despite all the things I've done, is still the grace of God prevailed in my life. And other symptoms. When we begin to be in, indifferent and concerned about the church and the ministry, indifferent to the program and goals of the church, unconcerned about, about life and the moralities of life. Oh, by the way, what is that group who has become so popular, Jars of Clay? You know the new announcement about the main singer of the Jars? Who among you know the Jars of Clay? A famous group. You'll be surprised with this announcement. Maybe some of you know already. The head singer of the Jars of Clay made an announcement only last week that he believes in same-sex marriage. He said, I do not see anything wrong with same-sex marriage. Can you believe that? A Christian group being almost, I tell you, most young people know them. Their songs are being sung in many churches. And all of a sudden, making, making this pronouncement, there's nothing wrong with same-sex marriage. 
Now look, when you begin to be desensitized about what's going on in this world, that means you're living a backslidden life. What I mean desensitize? You think everything is, so, is okay. There's nothing wrong with homosexuality. Nothing wrong with abortion. Nothing wrong with same-sex marriage. Nothing wrong, you know, with the, with, with the uh, uh, what do you call this, with the music, rock and roll music. Nothing wrong with, the, you know, with, with sexy for marriage. Nothing wrong with all those kind of things. That means you're backsliding. Believe me, many Christians have fallen into that pit. In the name of Christianity. In the name of love. There is a book that just came out. Written by he he uh, he said that he was a fundamental Christian, and he says, "I think the book, the premise of the book, is to announce that he is happy to be a Christian gay. Of course, happy and gay mean the same." Well, I'm not judging gays. I'm judging homosexuals. God loves homosexuals, God lo but God, lo God hates the style and what the homosexuals are doing. You know, I consider, I consider the homosexual desire like any other temptations. We are tempted every day, right? Same thing homosexuals, they're tempted every day. But as long as they what? So as long as they, they overcome the temptation. See? But when you begin to be unconcerned, we, don't be, we begin to, be, to, to feel desensitized from all these kind of things and thinking that everything is okay. And another thing, when we don't take responsibility of our mistakes, and instead blame others. How many times have you done that? It was blame others. It's him, not me. Now guess what? The Lord Jesus Christ did not make any mistake. But he took all the blame. Amen? That means as Christians, even if we have not made any mistake, we need to take the blame. Learn to take the blame in order to help others. That's what a Christian is. And lastly, not the symptoms. When we are oblivious to our own spiritual condition, what do I mean by that? You know, there are some people who don't even know they're backsliding. Right? Look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 17 to 18. Revelation 3, 17 to 18. It says here, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have, not, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, and yet you still claim, I'm rich. I'm okay. Just like a person knows that he's not living, you know, for God. He knows that he's not serving the Lord. He knows that he's not faithful to God. And yet he says, I'm okay. I'm spiritually okay. That means that person is oblivious to his own his spiritual condition. That means you're either not saved or you're backsliding. I believe this. This is scariest symptoms. Scariest symptoms. 
people are always in denial people who do not see things the way they should see it not transparent how do you think what do you think of a person who has cancer and yet denies he has the cancer he is not going to get some help similar to an individual who knows he's far away from God and he denies he is backsliding what is the solution in Luke chapter 9 verses 57 and 62 Beginning in verse 57, it says, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Let me explain these things. Because you know, some people think the Lord is unfair. His father died. He's so heartless not to even allow the person to bury his father first. Hey, this is not what it means here. What this person is telling, you know, can I wait until my father dies and bury him? It's not because his father died already. Can I wait until he gets old and until he dies? And after he dies, I'll follow you. It's the same thing. You know, Lord, if God calls you to the ministry, he said, Lord, can I wait until my child grows until 18 years old? Oh, Lord, you know, can I wait until I graduate from college? Lord, can I wait until I marry? Lord, can I wait until I am able to, to, to do what I want to do? That's what it means here. In verse 61, and another, that's why the Lord says, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. 81, 61. Another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell. Can you believe that? You know, a backslidden life will always find excuses not to follow God. A backslidden life will always, try to, will always find justification not to obey God. Bid them fair which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto them, No man, having put his hand on the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. No man. That means if we have made a decision to follow the Lord, be sure to follow God. You can never look back. If you have promised something to God, be sure to fulfill that. You can never say, Lord, i got to finish this. Lord, i got to do this. No. Put God first. Because a life of a backslider is a disobedient life. And the only thing that we need to do is to repent. Just like the psalmist in Psalm 51. You know, every time, I always use this passage. I remember when I was so miserable in my life that I could not really find words to even confess my sins before God. And then I will go to Psalm 51 and utter the same words that David uttered when he sinned against God. Because the only way to be restored back is to repent, confess, 
and turn back to God. Let me let us read again Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me truly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be white as snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy spirit. Then will I teach transgressions thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God. Thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. The prayer of repentance of a backslider. You know, based on all those things I've shared in the Word of God, the question to you is this. How's your spiritual life? If you're going to be honest with God and honest before you, and honest to yourself, how is your spiritual life? Maybe tonight is the night for you to come before God and say, Oh God, I've been in denial for a long time. I thought there's nothing wrong with me. But I just realized tonight my life is on that road called backsliding. And now I want to turn around. I want to repent. I want to come back to you. I again want to enjoy the fullness and the joy of my salvation. And the grace of God. That grace of God is still available to all of us. Amen. The only thing we need to do is come to God. Is there doubts in our hearts tonight? Is there bitterness in our hearts? Are our desires the same with God's desire? If not, come back to God. Let's all stand, please. Let's pray. I'd like to ask our pianists to play I Surrender All.
You know, God does not need half surrender. God needs our full surrender. You know, maybe it is a time for us. You know, I've been praying recently that God will bless and give the desires that's in our hearts. We are praying for church building. We're praying for revival. You know what? Revival must start in me. We ought not to point our fingers to others. It must begin in me. If God has spoken to your hearts right now, why don't you come to the altar and kneel before the altar and say, Oh Lord, I want to be right with you. If there's anything within me that is not right with you, if there's any fiber in my heart that is not totally right with you, I want that fiber in my heart to be right with you. Anybody else? Let's come. The song says, All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him. In His presence, daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, I, sur I blessed Savior. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. Humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me Jesus. Take me now. All to Jesus I surrender. Make me Savior holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit. Truly know that thou art mine. All to Jesus I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. I trust that nobody leaves this place without fully surrendered unto God. Our Father in heaven, O oh God, thank you again, O oh Lord, for the message you've given us tonight. I know it's not a convenient message, it's not a very comfortable message. But it's a message that we deserve to hear. O oh Lord, we we want, we have some desires. But all of we pray that through your grace, O oh God, we'll be deserving to receive those favors from you. First of all, O oh God, as the pastor of the church, O oh Lord, we confess our sins. I confess my sin. my fears, my doubts, my wrong decisions, my wrong motives. In behalf of your people, O God of IBC, I confess. I pray, O God, that you bring revival unto us tonight. Oh, Lord, we have just experienced sin in the camp, oh, God. Not for us to judge. Not for us to be condemning. But it is an indication, of oh God, for us to come before you. To humble ourselves before you, oh, Lord.
to admit our mistakes and to repent and to make things right, O oh God, for your glory. I commit, O oh God, all our preachers. O oh God, I pray for all our preachers, O oh Lord, to be serious, O oh God, in their calling. They put their hands in a plow, but they will never look back. I pray for our pastors. I pray for our families this church I pray oh God for all our leaders for all our workers I pray for all our ministries all our congregations all our mission works our school our outreaches our task forces I pray, O oh God, for all the people, O oh God, who are, who are going through difficulties right now, who are hurting, that they will find peace even in the midst of trials. I pray, O oh God, for our community, for this world, that we will remain to be salt in the light of the world, to be light in this darkened world. And as a salt to influence people, O oh God, towards righteousness. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your forgiveness. And thank you, O oh God, for restoring us into fellowshipping with you. For we give you all the praises and all the glory. We ask all these things in your mighty name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Do we need God's power? Do we need God's grace? God's favor? Yes, we do. You know, I'm I'm very excited about what God can do in this ministry. It's my prayer that all the membership of IABC will realize the enormity of our situations and the opportunity that God has actually set before us. We have not yet seen the best. The best will still come. It, not, it might not be, it might be I'm still here or not. That does not matter. What matters is the word and the will of God prevails. I trust that we'll keep this message in our hearts and share this message unto others to be an encouragement, just like what the Lord Jesus Christ told Peter when thou art converted. What did he say? What did he say? When thou art converted, be happy. When thou art converted, be satisfied. When thou art converted, no, strengthen the brethren. Our victory is not for me. Your victory is not for you. Your victory is for all. Our goal is to strengthen others, inspire others, empower others encourage others that's the effect of true victory and true revival let's all stand please and let us pray I'd like to ask let's